sperm, semen, cum, jizz, spooge, whatever you want to call the stuff, there's no doubting that it has had an incredibly important role in shaping the characteristics across the animal kingdom. Now, you may just think of sperm as just some small tadpole-like cells whose only job is to swim towards an egg and fuse with it. Well, actually, on an evolutionary scale, its role is a lot more profound than that. Now, when you look across the tree of life, it's pretty clear that differences in genitalia aren't the only feature that enable us to distinguish between males and females. For example, red deer stags have antlers, male mandrills have beautiful facial coloration, and male elephant seals are just, well, enormous. Charles Darwin was very much aware of this, and in 1871 he published The Descent of Man, which outlined his theory of sexual selection, which states that traits which increase reproductive success are likely to increase in frequency in a population even if they are detrimental to survival. So by that logic, natural and sexual selection seem to be acting in opposition. Think of a peacock's tail, for example. That's great if you want to try and impress and attract a pea hen. Not so great if you want to try and escape a hungry fox. So what we see in nature today is therefore the outcome of a balancing act between these two selective forces, and that has resulted in some pretty wacky differences between the sexes. Now as a general rule, it's usually the males which compete with one another to gain access to the females, and that's why the males of many species have evolved large body sizes, weaponry such as antlers, and flashy courtship displays. But it may seem hard to grasp how those exaggerated traits evolved in the first place. Well, the answer is all in the spunk. This was proposed by British biologist Jeff Parker in the 1970s, who realised that sexual selection could still occur after copulation had taken place. Now this is especially true for the external fertilisation strategies of fish and amphibians, but can still occur in internally fertilising organisms as well, especially if there's the opportunity for the female to store sperm from previous mating experiences. Jeff Parker called this idea sperm competition, and he used it to explain why males produce so much sperm. Parker stated that whenever there was strong sperm competition, males would produce more sperm, and in some cases, individual sperm size would increase as well, as this is thought to increase motility, making the sperm faster. Having bigger sperm also fills up the female sperm storage organ, of course, which also further increases the chance of paternity. Now, this is obviously not what the female wants at all, and this has led to an evolutionary battle between the sexes, and the result are some pretty gruesome strategies on behalf of the males. For example, some males release toxins in their ejaculate, which kill off any rival sperm. But not only this, it's been shown that these toxins also reduce female survival as well. Hell. So with all this intense competition occurring at the level of individual sperm cells, we can now begin to understand what effect this has on male morphology and behaviour. And a good place to start is your testicles. If you look across the great apes, for example, testes size seems to correlate pretty strongly with the level of sperm competition. Chimpanzees, for example, have multiple matings, which means there's a lot of sperm competition, which means they have massive testes, whereas male silverback gorillas form tight knit harems, which means silverback gorillas actually, relative to their body size, have the smallest testes of all the great apes. I told you not to tell anyone. In fact, a study done on insects showed that species which mate more than once have a much richer variety of genital phenotypes. You've got to have some claim to fame, I suppose. We also see differences in male behaviour, from prolonged copulations, to sneak matings, to guarding behaviour, to the use of chastity belts, and in the case of ducks, even full-on rape. This has got out of control. Now, as you may imagine, this can have detrimental effects on the female, and as a result, they've evolved their own defensive adaptations to keep the arms race ticking. But there are some benefits as well. After all, mating with multiple desperate, sexually charged males increases the chances of them getting their genes into the next generation, which is ultimately what this is all for. 
And secondly, mating multiply increases their chances of their offspring getting better and more genetically diverse genes, which is likely to increase their survival. So basically, beneath the antlers, the flashy colors, and the cute displays, there's a whole other soap opera occurring in a completely different biological dimension. So next time you admire a red deer stag or the beautiful feathers of a peacock, just think that these traits have only come about because of a microscopic evolutionary battle occurring in the jizz. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and hit the notification bell as well so you can stay updated with all my wildlife and science adventures. I'm also on social media. The links are in the description below this video. But in the meantime, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you very soon. Cheers. Let's get scratching.